So we know that Hal Steinbrenner is different than his dad, George Steinbrenner, for a lot of reasons. Okay? We're going to talk about that. And I have today's Yankee lineup for you, too. Let's get into it. What's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing well. So there's been, I mean, over the last, I don't know how many years, <clears throat> there's been a lot of, I wish George Steinbrenner were back and so on. And, and, and there's no doubting his, the clout that he had with the Yankees. And he basically resurrected the franchise. So kudos to him for that. And he bought them, I don't know, for $10 million, something like that. And he turned them into a multi-billion dollar franchise. Okay. And. There's no denying that, but he didn't always do the right thing, okay? Not always, and I think it's important to point that out because while Hal Steinbrenner and the rest of the crew, you know, don't aren't as aggressive as George Steinbrenner was, they're also not as, as, loud, as loud and obnoxious as George Steinbrenner once was as well, and that's an important thing. These guys are more strategic than George, Okay. And being loud and obnoxious and talking tough doesn't make you tough. It just makes you look stupid. Especially if you can't back it up. I say this all the time. So big mouths are always going to be big mouths. Okay? Now, but again, there's no denying George Steinbrenner's impact on the New York Yankees. He's the boss. He'll forever be the boss. May he rest in peace. And like I said, he resurrected the franchise. But there are a couple of, a couple of things that I wanted to address just to give people a little bit of a deeper understanding, okay, especially in a certain area, okay? So if you happen to be a fan and you're not subscribed to this channel, hit that sub button right now and hit all the notification buttons too. That way you don't miss out on anything. I greatly appreciate it, and um, I, want to, I want to keep you uh, kept in, in the loop on everything when it comes to the Yankees. Now, I'm going to put you know, I'm going to add an article here and talk about it, okay? Attaching it here, okay. George Steinbrenner's obsession with destroying Dave Winfield's change Yankees forever. Now, let's, let's read this a little bit, okay? The, the room was a step up from the brain, from the broom closet. The, the, the uh, visiting Yankees manager office in the kingdom was hastily turned into a forum for a press conference. The Yankees brought in general manager Pete Peterson and manager Bucky Dent. Dave Winfield invited himself. The Yankees were not wise enough to prevent it. I'm going to have the last word on this, the way Dave Winfield remembered. It's about May 11, 1990. The day the Yankees kind of, sort of, traded him. I forced my way into that. Okay? And it's just some backstory that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you, too, here. And we'll get into that. Now let's move this back up here. Okay. Peterson and uh, Dent... Would also do the talking that day for the Yankees. But after a decade in the organization's employ, Winfield knew there was an, uh, an offstage puppeteer pulling the strings. Okay. So Peterson announced Winfield had been traded to the Angels for pitcher Mike Witt. Winfield countered, I'm not going anywhere. I'll make the choice when and where and how I go. This began in bizarre, testy, uh, confrontational press conference in which Peterson and Winfield dueled openly about, or mainly about, whether a clause in his contract that permitted the Yankees to trade him to the Angels outweighed his 10-5 and five rights. 10-5 and five rights are well-known in baseball. Okay, 10 years in the majors, 5 with the same team, 5 of one team. That granted any player the right to veto or approve a trade. That's a well-known fact in baseball. Winfield, just for a few months into the fall season, of his 10-year contract with the Yankees was just a few months into it. Over the decade, uh, from literally the closet, the puppeteer had grown to hate Winfield, to insult him, to, the, yeah, yeah, to my, uh, just uh, nickname him, to sue him. Now, the obsession now led George Steinbrenner kind of sort of trade Winfield. But the obsession would have much greater implications uh, than determining which contractual clause was. It's sunny out, so I'm having a hard time this. Um, was dominant when it came to a 
a trade. By the end of the 1990 season, Steinbrenner would be banned for the from uh, for life from return from the Yankees because he simply could not stop trying to destroy the win team. Let's talk about this, okay? I'm going to attach this article so you can read it for yourself. Again, get into, get a little bit more insight. Because I have more stuff here okay, that I found. And again, this stuff is all true. Okay, you can, you can look at it yourself. And I'm going to read something else here, which is a little bit more revealing. And where is Mr. Reggie? Where is Reggie Jackson? We need a Mr. October or a Mr. September. Winfield is Mr. May. This is from George Steinbrenner. Okay. Running his mouth when he shouldn't be running his mouth, but that's what he known is known for. Right? Real talk. Right. The feud between Steinbrenner and Mr. May came to a boiling point in 1990. Now, what happened? George Steinbrenner, he paid uh, gambler Howard Spira $40,000 up there on Winfield to ruin his reputation. Commissioner Faye Vincent banned Steinbrenner from baseball for life on July 30th, 1990. Eventually, he was reinstated in 1993. So that was a devastating blow to the Yankees and their franchise, obviously. A dark time. But with that dark time led to one of the more significant periods in Yankees history. Okay? I'm going to read this too. Steinbrenner was ultimately banned. The funny thing is the temporary... Uh, Ban of the boss may have been one of the best things to ever happen in the Yankees. In his absence, Gene Michael and others, Brian Sabian and others, um, allowed promising young players to develop rather than trade them for established veterans, which Steinbrenner was notorious for doing. This included the likes of Derek Jeter, Bernie Williams, Andy Pettit, okay, without pressure from Steinbrenner to build an instant contender. Michael had the groundwork for the late 90s dynasty that would go on to win four championships in five seasons. So him being banned from the game, they didn't even include Mariano Rivera in that either. So this is crazy, okay? Absolutely crazy. No one can deny that the boss would do whatever it took to win, and I won't deny that either. You know, you knew that he loved his team and he loved his business and so on. He did whatever he took. Sometimes he got himself in the trouble and went too far. Okay. At the end of the day, however, it was his temporary absence that helped uh, mold one of the greatest dy dynasties we've ever seen. Hands down. Absolutely hands down. So, just goes to show you how Cashman and the rest of them may not be as aggressive as George Steinbrenner, right? But that doesn't mean they're not as strategically better than him. Okay, you don't always need to run your mouth to and trash people to make an impact. That makes you look dumb more than it makes you look smart. Okay? This applies to a lot of people, not just George Steinbrenner. Okay? Tough talk. Doesn't make you look tough. Now, like I said, I'm going to leave that article down below. So, but again, Steinbrenner has definitely played an integral part of the Yankees dynasty in, in a lot of different ways. But so did Hal. Hal actually talked him off the ledge because he wanted to trade Derek Judy. He wanted to trade Mariano Rivera. Hal's the one that talked him out of it, convinced him to not do it. So credit to Hal for that. And without the moves that Cashman has made, to complement the moves that Steinbrenner has made, maybe they wouldn't have won all those other championships. He's the guy that brought in El Duque, Scott Brocious, David Wells, Roger Clements, right? David Justice. He's the guy that drafted Aaron Judge, Jason Dominguez. A lot of guys we talk about nowadays, those are all Cashman moves, okay? And I understand people might tell me I'm a Cashman lover, Hal lover, and blah, blah, blah. It's fine, but... That's if giving him credit where credit is due, that includes Hal, gets in your head, then it's not my problem. Those are facts, whether we like them or not. But again, that said, George Steinbrenner will be missed. Okay, but it's important to remember when he was banned from baseball, 
That's when all those guys were brought in and kept here and allowed to develop and shine and allowed to be brought up to the majors. Most of the guys in the core four, leaving the core five. So that's ma that matters. Now, I have today's lineup for you. Okay, they're playing they're playing two games actually. They're playing the Pirates, and for the first time in almost 60 years, they're playing the uh, Diablos, Pueblos, or something like that from Mexico. Trevor Bauer is making his Mexican League debut today, and he's going to be facing some group of Yankees. I don't know who because I can't find the lineup. But I have the lineup for the, game, for the game against the Pirates. Okay? And Luis Gonzalez is leading off in, in right field. Caleb Durbin is batting second in center field. Austin Wells batting third at DH. Luis Torrens batting cleanup at first base. Josh Van Meter batting fifth at third base. Jemai Jones batting sixth in left field. Ben Rorfett's at the dish, batting seventh. George Lombard Jr., it's good to see him in there too, batting eighth at shortstop. And Brandon Lockridge batting ninth in center field. And towing the slab on the mound is Marcus Stroman, baby, against the Pirates. 105 p.m. game today. Maybe some of the starters and the Yankees are going to be facing Trevor Bauer. I don't know. He's clearly looking to get back into the majors. But it's still obvious as to why teams are not biting on this. Fans will bring him in. He's on the cheap, blah, blah, blah. But it's it's been clear, too, that all is not right between him and Garrett Cole, despite what a couple of people said. Okay? If that matters. <clears throat> all is in the, not, not all the Yankees have signed off on bringing him in either. So... That matters as well. But again, as even it pertains to the Yankees, there is another team. No team is biting on his is, is, uh, offer to play for the league minimum. Not a single team. That's what active investigations have. He's got multiple accusers and all this stuff. And until that stuff is finally cleared up, I can't see him being signed. Okay? And just like I'm happy that the Shohei Otani drama is not a Yankees problem, I'm also happy that Trevor Bauer drama is not a Yankees problem. So maybe some people feel differently, and that's fine. But I'm glad it's not a problem. So, and I'll stick with that. Now, I don't know if the lineup comes out. I'll put a short and let you know what the lineup is against the against Bauer again. And I'll keep you updated as much as I can. I'll find out stats. And obviously, we'll, I'll give you an update on the Yankees after the Pittsburgh game. They, they tied yesterday with the Pirate, with the Phillies. 6-6, six, six, and they got the butt kicks by the Tigers. 11-12-6. It was not a good day. It's windy out. My God. It's win um, it was not a good day for their starters. Not a great day for Carlos Rodon, and even a worse day for Cody Poteet. So, but Clayton Beater was good. He was very good yesterday. So they had some bright spots. They really did. So with that said, that's what I got for you right now. Let me know what your thoughts are on the George Steinbrenner situation. Have a good day. Talk to you later.